let's um make sure we're live let's have a look we uh we all good dave on the old facebook mate i'm uh, blind <laughs> did you go live i didn't, didn't even notice <laughs> whoops <laughs> just want to find um, a spot for that i'll put it there for now yeah, that's fine Right, let's just check if we're live. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the day's Tuesday tuning, where we're going to be talking all things mountains. Jesus, stay too much. Uh, no, no, mate, you go for it. You, if, 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 if you feel inspired and you want to go for it, I'm, I'm all right. <sighs> the only problem is I feel like I just wasted all my Tuesday <laughs> tuning energy. <laughs> is that it? Uh, right, Marky V, who's on there? Let's have a look. If you if you've joined us, um, do drop in the comments. Do say hello. See your nade beard. Um, David I reckon... Clift. If there are, if, if there's an arrivals process for um, the Tuesday tune-in, part of it should be, hello, say, <laughs> giving you, yep. do say hello. Um, how caffeine? How much caffeine have you had, Dave? Yeah, that's that's a good chat actually, Dave. You've had quite a bit this morning, haven't you? Yeah, definitely had a um, a coffee this morning. Yeah, definitely had a coffee. That's my, usually all you need. My eye is twitching like crazy. I was going to say you, you can, you're going to be twitching the way through the live today, but uh, no, great to see so many people yeah. on. Uh, great stuff. Yeah, we've got Dave Shona. Bry, uh, we got Ash. Did you see that Leah. Brian actually came to Wales the other day? And I didn't did. Visit. He didn't even tell us. I know. I was like, Bry. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Looked like a great weekend, though. It looked like a really good weekend. Always good when ever trackers catch up with everyone. Um, but yeah, guys, it's a little bit different today, isn't it? We we're talking about um, arrivals. We haven't really done one about this. I can think of the last couple of years. Um, well, we haven't had any arrivals. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> is yeah. that why? Is that yeah, why? over the last couple of years, we've mainly done um, <laughs> what to do whilst you're waiting to go on your track. I know. I know. It's, it has been a, a busy, um, you know, very busy three months. Absolutely crazy. We've got a lot of arrivals this week. Um, we're kind of almost uh, coming to the end of the trekking season in Nepal, but we've still got a lot of arrivals. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, and we've also got a lot, you know, thinking ahead to sort of June, August, uh, obviously July in the middle of those months. Um, yeah. You know, we've got, and then September again, it's like trekking season. It's like we've got so many arrivals this year. Mm. It's absolute craziness. So we thought, what, what what better reason to talk about it? And, you know, when we are chatting with the team and coming up with a lot of the questions that are coming in on email, um, also as well on our messenger on the website, um, as well as that, you know, some of the questions that happen in the group as well, mm. we could kind of get a gauge and feel that, okay, maybe there's, um, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe some questions around arrivals. So we thought, right, we're going to talk about that today. Uh, as well as everything else so you know if you do have any questions not just around arrivals mm. you can ask about dave's knee you can ask about mm. his twitchy eye mm. um anything at all uh do remember drop shingles? in the comment i do remember shingles we, you know what we should have like a board of all your <laughs> fill that whole wall it's gonna fill that whole wall yeah <laughs> to be honest it's, it, well i've been fine for years and then i yeah. got to like 36 mm. That seemed to be my point there where i just uh was that the line was it that was the line yeah wow. i just it was like plummeting but yeah, um, uh, yeah, Leah's asked who's on the telephones today. So we've got uh, uh, Rosie, I believe, on the yeah, phones. Rosie is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Rosie's on it today. Yeah. Lauren's off on, on some leave. Um, and yeah, I know the guys who take it in turns, but Rosie's on the questions today. Yeah. And she's and she has put the line. Yeah. Um, this is the line started because I kept answering is that what the it previous was? weeks. Because we have had some questions in on email because when we sort of we drop, we drop the email out, um, you know, usually uh, kind of half 10, 11 o'clock. And we usually get a bunch of uh, questions off the back of that, so we do have some of them. Um, but right, Dave, let's chat about arrivals then. I mean, mm, it's really, my, it's my favourite part of the trip. It's the kind of uh, over the years, we, we've kind of always thought about right. You know, you you get your tickets, you sort your visas, you you pack your bags, you get to the country, mm. and then you're like, okay, what do I do now? You yeah. know, I've come to a big scary country, and I walk through. You know, I've collected my baggage. Um, I've straight to the bar got a stamp Everest beer well normally that would be me <laughs> yeah but you're kind of like okay what what happens now guys what happens you know when I arrive you know who picks me up all those kind of questions and I think that's it isn't it when it can be you know if you haven't traveled that much or maybe you haven't traveled for a while or certainly it's a new country um some things can be a little bit scary at times right that's, yeah no you know, particularly naturally. I think as well it's getting less and less although you know it could always come back again but yeah the, the travel requirements um to be able to enter countries is a little bit that's perhaps i think where the scariness has come from now because yeah. people are not 100 percent certain do they need pcrs to go here do they need one to yeah. come home is there a form they need to fill out um and i do completely sympathize i mean my, part of my job is to have a look at the fco travel advice and figure out how we're allowed to go to countries and yeah. 
it's it's not the easiest thing in the world to understand. So we are getting questions like, you know, well, how do I get my visa? What documents do I need for the visa? Yeah. Two seconds before we walked in here, someone uh, emailed in a question um, saying they're having some difficulty with the Tanzanian one. So yeah, I think what we do is we'll probably shed some light on the big few, you know, yeah, there's, there's, like EDC, kind of big... Tanzania are probably the two biggest. Yeah, Morocco and, and and definitely South America with Peru as well, which is 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 another I'd say our probably our third or fourth biggest trip in terms of um you know number of ever trackers going on. Um, but obviously the, the the big two really for us in terms of eighty percent of our ever trackers are Tanzania and Nepal. Hmm. Um, you know, obviously Nepal being where we started, and obviously as we as we expanded. Um, right now, you know, we've got people arriving. I think today and tomorrow, um, which is is nuts. Mm -hmm. And yeah, certainly. I mean, let's, let's start with Nepal because you know we got a lot of our. That's where we all started. That's where we all started. And you know, when you arrive, it can be a bit, a bit of a crazy one. Even if you've got your visa already, the journey through can still be a little bit challenging. Can't yeah. It? So before you get there, obviously you can get a visa on arrival, or you can get a visa before you go. Yeah. I recommend getting it before you go. We've both done it both ways. Yeah. Um, and it's not the end of the world if you need to get it when you arrive there, but you'll land, you'll get off the plane, you'll be funneled through a corridor, and the first room you enter proper is the visa room. Um, it's, it's, you know, nuts. you don't get to your baggage, you don't go through immigration, you get to the visa hall. If you've already got it in advance, yeah. you can walk through the queues like a celebrity <laughs> um, and just go straight out. If you haven't, little bit queuing involved there's these machines that look like atms which take your picture they spit out a form and then you think what do i go with this and then there's a person over there and you queue for him and he says no go there first and then you go over there yeah and basically yeah you've got to then you've got to pay for it then you've got to go so there's a couple of different points you've got to do um it's worth mentioning as well actually about the new announcement that the Nepal government has um well the civil aviation authority has put out about is this the spending money the money yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah, nice. if you are getting a visa on arrival you need to buy it from the visa room yeah. um, in a foreign currency. So you can't use Nepali currency. Um, but a lot of people are arriving thinking they can pay on bank card or something like that. They don't accept card, it has to be cash. Yeah. So They like their cash. Yep, yeah. and if you get to that situation, mm. you then have to be escorted to a cash machine where you will draw out Nepalese money. Then they'll take you to the bureau to charge, yeah. where you'll switch it to dollars, and then you'll yeah. go back in, join the queue again, and get to the front um, and pay. However, so many people are doing this that the cash machine and the bureau <laughs> de change are running out of change, so no one's able to actually do it. And some people yeah. are getting stuck there for ages until someone can help them. It's a um, bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, and they, you know, they have addressed it in terms of okay, right, you need to have certain amount of, of, of money you can use. And they and what is it they've said then? So they, they, you have to bring up 200 US. 200 US yeah. in cash um, yeah. is what they recommend bringing with you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot more than you need, but it's a good amount to have. It's usually yeah. give or take what I have normally. Um, the visa for a 30 day visa, never get the 15 day. You're there 15 days, which means if you're delayed in an hour, you breach. 30 yeah. days, it's about $50, $40. Uh, 40 US, yeah. 40 it's, US. So even though they're asking you to bring 200, it's just if you have any more difficulties, I think they're, um, you know, and you can exchange that in Kathmandu. Um, you know, in Tamil, there's lots of places you can uh, exchange it. You can do it at the hotel. Um, you know, if you're at a loft or one of the other hotels, you can um, uh, you can easily uh, kind of change that, um, uh, you know, if you bring it over. So, yeah, a lot easier. I'm just going through some of the questions here. Oh, we got Sarah from Shukung as well. Ooh, Sarah, yeah, Shukung. I bet you get. I bet you got a nice view of Island Peak from there. Yeah, very jealous. Very jealous. Hey, Anush, Namaste, Namaste brother. How are you um, doing? From all the way from Kathmandu, man. We're getting the we're getting the Nepali. I was going to say it's great. Today. Yeah, people, people. Um, uh, yeah, from from afar, which is yeah. always good. So, um, yeah, the two hundred dollars. Make yes. sure you bring it. It's a good amount to have anyway, because yeah. you know you can buy some. Like when you leave the airport, um, it's a little bit of a sort of. Um, you know, it's quite noisy, hustle yeah. and bustle. But you'll see the Evertrack guy there with the Evertrack. Just make a beeline for him. But um, sometimes you want to buy a bottle of water. Sometimes you want to tip yeah. the driver. Having a little bit of extra cash on you when you arrive is always good. Yeah. But I should clarify, when I said get your visa beforehand, two ways you can do it. One is the online process, um, which yeah. we've done a couple of times. It's relatively straightforward. Um, you just got to... Uh, when I did it, which might have changed by now, been in a while, print off a form send it off to the Nepali embassy with your passport and a um, postage order. Is that what they're called? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, you can get those, yeah, postal yeah, order. Postal order, and um, I sent it off on a Monday, had it back on a Thursday. Or you can go to London and just visit the embassy. But call ahead, make sure they're there before you get there. <laughs> just look at people playing bingo, brilliant. Um, yeah, the, I mean, you know, because we're talking about the arrival process, it has changed, you know, with... Has um, my North Face t-shirt been added to bingo? Um, clearly, because you like to wear North Face t-shirts. I do, yeah. yeah. They, they, this is the one... Although that's... it's mirrored today, because uh, we have to be on the right side. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah, everything is going to read backwards, like literally. So, Evertrack is backwards. Look at that. Look how yeah. great that is. Yeah, but it's weird though if we change it. But no, going um, yeah, going back to to sort of when you arrive. To be honest, their their guidance is getting better. So when you arrive, some of the um, the arrows and you know the posters or you know um, directions, they are getting better. At it, um, you know, over the over the years uh, when it comes to telling you where to go. Um, but yeah, certainly any any new. People arriving into Nepal, we are advising, you know, we're, we're trying to, uh, this is kind of brand new news, but we're, we're updating all our information so that, you know, um, like for instance, you get a pre-arrival email before you get to Nepal um, and that'll tell you, okay, you need to have 200 US before you land. And it's, you know, you, you might not use all of that and might bring it back with you. And I know it's a pain because, you know, it'd be great to use Sterling. Um, you know, if you're coming from the UK, obviously we do have some ever trackers from the US, so you've already got that. Um, but yeah, this it's just a rule they've brought in. Just to manage and stop the bottleneck that is literally when you go through um, getting your visa hall and everyone's trying to get money and there's yeah. no money because that that's hard work. Yeah, even you know? better is get it before you go. Yeah, honestly, um, uh, the first two times or three times I went to Nepal, I got it on yeah. arrival um, just because I didn't want another job to sort out before I went. But when I got there, yeah, I've been in that visa hall forty minutes is quick. Yeah, uh, and I've been in there two and a half hours. Um, which after a long haul, it's hot, sweaty, queuing. Yeah, it's much nicer when you, when I see people just walk straight through, and I'm like, well, "What are you doing?" Oh, I got it beforehand. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, and it's um, yeah, and it just makes things much easier. What do you reckon about um? I'm just reading. I, I, it took me a while actually to see what Andy was getting at, and um, uh, Mona as well. They actually the North Face. They typed it in backwards, so we. I get feel it. like I feel like <laughs> I feel very good. I feel right now like. We're teachers who've lost control of the class. Like no one heard anything I said about visas. Oh, just then that everyone's just looking for things they can read backwards. I know that's it, isn't it? Oh, clearly, clearly. But um, it's quick. oh, there we are. Ever trek backwards? Is that what it is? Katrive. Yeah, Katrive. Katrive in the waves. Yeah. Sorry, I had to get something. Something. Um, yeah. Shona's asking. We we're there two hours. Felt sorry for Ever Trek guy waiting for us outside. And that's you know it does take us to the next stage. And obviously, once you pick your bag up, and I think Shona mentioned earlier so once you've got your visa you go through um there might be some other um you know sort of uh, basically security measures that happen but when you get your bags they might not be on the um actually on the what do you call it carousel carousel they're usually on the floor only because they, they're all dragged off and put into a big pile so do kind of check that they're there um yeah because you think oh my god where's my bag it's not on there um i remember once waiting two hours for my bag and you know, I was like, oh, is this going to arrive? Is this going to arrive? Because there'd been some issues with me getting over. This is way before Evertrek, but I remember when I arrived in Kathmandu. And um, there it was looking lonely on the carousel as it came towards me, looking sorry for itself as it was the last one put on. But um, yeah, I was very relieved. But then, yeah, just as we mentioned, my show is there. It's feeling sorry for the Evertrek guys. But when you do get out of the airport, there is then someone to welcome you. Yeah. That's yeah. part of the arrivals. So it's often, it's... It's one of the most important parts of the service we provide, I think. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I stress over quite a lot because no. I know what <laughs> I know what it's like to arrive in a country yeah. that you've never been to before. Sometimes you're on your own and there's supposed to be someone there waiting. There's like several fears that I have. One, okay, I want to get through immigration. I always, yeah. always, always get stopped and searched. Why? I don't know why. I think they just must just think I'm a thug for some reason. I don't know. But anyway... <laughs> I always deny it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. It is uh, every time I'm like we laugh about it now because let's factor in an additional ten. Yeah, so day. normally we need two hours, but Dave's gonna get searched, <laughs> so we'll give three. Um yeah. and then it's like, okay, is my bag gonna arrive? And then the yeah. next fear then is oh, is there someone gonna be there to meet me because I don't yeah. want the hassle of doing this on my own. Yeah. Once you've been in the pool a few days, you realize that it's that would be safe. no it would be no yeah, stress yeah. at all. You know, it's like I've got taxis around Nepal, like just in Kathmandu, it's it's easy. But when you yeah. first arrive in a country, obviously you're, you're unfamiliar. It's a little bit intimidating for everyone. So, yeah, tats, crime <laughs> culture. <laughs> oh, brilliant. brilliant. Uh, so, uh, 
Nadia, I, I'm trying to see because some people are writing backwards now, and I'm trying to actually my brain. Dave, my brain, I clearly haven't looked. Is that what it is? These are legit stuff. Yeah, just yeah. peel them off. Yeah, I wish someone told me they didn't come off before I put them off. Anyway, um, <laughs> I just saw, I saw one where um, you know Jerome said, "I'm paying attention, Dave." So I think I'm going to make Jerome official hall monitor. Is that what you it know, is? He, okay. he, he always has a like he's collecting tiles, um, so he's official hall monitor today. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, yeah, uh, if anyone sort of uh, is caught out line, Jerome will grass you up to the head. <laughs> brilliant. No, but it is. But when you arrive, you know, it can be a bit kind of nuts and think, "Oh my God, where am I?" You know, you, maybe there's a bit of anxiety there because you haven't been there before. Um, you know, and do remember, you know, if you're walking out, um, you know, people might be sorting other people out, so do wait. You know, uh, you know, a few minutes. Um, sometimes, you know, we, we've had people wait 10 minutes and it's like, oh, yeah, they've got someone there with the Avatrek sign, um, you know, which is is great. So, yeah, when you arrive through, that's what you'll see. There's going to be quite a few people there. Like there might be anything from 50 to 100 people holding up signs. So it might take you a little bit of time to find yeah. them. If not, just just stay where you are. Try not to panic too much. Um, you know, there will be someone there to, to collect you when you get the pre-arrival um, details. Anyway, there are a couple of emergency numbers if there's any issues yeah um for whatever reason you know we, we have to be transparent things do happen um from time to time so we, we always obviously try and manage that as, as well as we can but the guys on the ground um you know yeah. do have it all in hand um when it comes to to that part and then you know when you're picked up you go to the air uh, go to the airport you go to the hotel it's a quick, uh, quick journey as a <laughs> <laughs> i know that was a wonderful trip picked up i'm here <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah you go to the hotel and then uh it's, it's kind of What's next, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so, you broke my mind. I know, I broke, broke, it there. broke it there. So, yeah, one of, one of the joys is that, um, actually, you know, we should reveal to some people some of the little things we do to throw each other off sometimes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we won't do it now, but maybe yeah, yeah. one day, because there one are day. certain things we do that we know makes each other laugh. So, if Andy's ever talking and you see me just check my phone, I'll go, it's because of that. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so when you arrive at the hotel, so um, actually wanted to do a little bit of... Um, sort of education about the hotel so obviously we yeah before covid started or during covid really we announced the transfer over to a loft in tamil yes it's a really 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 nice hotel um it's like a five star right in the center of tamil right in the hustle and bustle um and now trips are starting the season is so crazy over there that every hotel is suffering like bottlenecks yeah um so we've had i think one or two occasions where there's been no rooms at a loft for a night or two um, and a couple of ever trekkers have been transferred to a really nice nearby hotel called Nepali Gar. Um, it's actually one of my favorite hotels because yeah, it's I've, I've it's um, it's, it's nice. more like of a it's it's a different feel entirely a from a hotel, loft. Yeah, it's a yeah. boutique hotel. It's designed with Nepali architecture in mind. Um, it is really nice, and it's five minutes from a loft. Yeah. Um, but all it means is that you will be transferred to a loft as soon as there yeah. is a room, um, and you can still go and use the pool and use all the facilities. Um, but it just means you'll be staying in Nepali Gar, which is still personally, it's, it, yeah. it's one of the first hotels I ever stayed in when I was there. And it's um, it's really nice. But anyway, just to like, you know, full transparency, yeah. it's happening all over the place. Um, particularly, you know, with some of the big, you know, tourist hotels and things like that, you get a lot of people who, uh, you know, trying yeah. it. And we had a couple of occasions where they are at capacity. Say someone comes down from the mountains early because they're a little bit unwell. Obviously, yeah. we want to look after those in a comfortable place. So, yeah that all kind of plays into it as well yeah but, but yeah once you get to the hotel the arrival day yeah it's pretty much that it's an arrival day the whole day is just about getting you to the hotel so you can have a shower freshen up maybe catch up on some z's get some food yeah. and almost always the first thing me and andy do is we'll like go and get well he's already had about five coffees <laughs> And then we'll go downstairs and we're like, I'll probably look for an Everest beer. First. Yeah, an Everest beer. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and then we go, let's, and you just have a little walk, just locally, you yeah. know, around the little, just get a feel for the place um, and go to sleep. That's it. End of day one. That's all you do. Well, I mean, uh, you know, there's, there's, <laughs> sometimes there's an element of first night syndrome. I've heard about a couple of the boys um, from Wales who went there just before COVID. And they went out and got first night syndrome, got absolutely flat. Didn't the guy get I got run over by yeah, a, got run over by a, a car? A, yeah, a car, wasn't I it? should it say is... that's not typical. No, that uh, was um, I, I, I one did. of those, unfortunately. He still made the trek. Uh, yeah, well, he had to do a horse over the first couple of days. That's right. I remember a news texting me and saying, like, hey, brother, how's it going? Just to let you know, one of the other trekkers got hit by a car. I was like, what? Yeah, but, uh, yeah. it changed. Um, like a lot of uh, Tamil uh, didn't, it is now, but never used to be. It used to be um like vehicles used to go through it's actually pedestrianized about two and a half three years ago um which makes it a lot safer because of all the, the people there 
But I remember the days of going there and, and you know bikes and cars nailing it past you like you know this far. Kind of miss it in a way. But um, yeah, obviously do be careful if you're walking around um, certain areas. Vehicles, you know, that they do just you know it is it is safe, but it's also a crazy city. You've got to walk with confidence when um, you're around town. Yeah, like yeah. If, if you hesitate. Hey, Mick's from Nam. Hey, hey, Mick. Mick. Hey, Mick, how does it feel to be back in Namji? I wanted to find out because Mick, yeah, um, base camp. Anyway, I went to base camp uh, quite a few years ago. Um, very emotional trip for him, and now he's back. So, Mick, yeah. how is it to be back in the Himalaya? Emotional, exciting, fun? Is it a little bit, a little bit like um, deja vu? Let me know. Um, yeah, it's great to have Mick back. Yeah. Finally, finally, Mick. On his, After way all his time. on his way to Island Peak as well. Yes. Is I'm so I'm glad we've done so many lives on Island Peak as well because we're really well. We want to make sure Mick gets the <laughs> yeah. Next week yeah. we're going to do an Island Peak live, Mick. So you should tune in for that one. <laughs> um, but Very yeah, true. so yeah, yeah once yeah, you have yeah. your first day, it's arrived, you know, and then yeah. then we're sort of into the itinerary proper. So yeah. I'll only, I'll stop at day two. You know what happens once you get to the mountains. But day two yeah. is a little bit of a, a fun one as well, isn't it? Yeah, and with the with the arrivals, something we've you know, like after the last couple of years, um, you know, we always have these kind of expectations and okay, this is going to happen and this is going to happen. Like anything, we, you know, if you've ever watched one of these lives, we're always talking about kind of rolling with the punches and and also as well that sometimes we make changes for, for, the, for the good of the group uh, or for one reason or another or because of changes for weather, whatever it is. You know, we always try and remain a little bit flexible. But something we've actually realised, um, you know, especially from day one, and this is part of the arrivals as well, is that people arrive at, Varying times during the day, depending on they get, you know, what 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 time they get the flights. And we always advise, you know, if you can, the earlier the better, because you get you get more of day one. But you know, it doesn't always happen, and and sometimes the actual later flights are a bit cheaper as well. But sometimes we, um, you know, over the last couple of years, we've had people arrive um, quite late and they've missed the arrival meal. Um, so now we've we've actually bumped that to day two, mm -hmm. um, which just basically just to just some. People don't miss it because it's quite an important thing for all the group to kind of meet each other. Um, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen and it's great. We could do it day one. But majority of the time now, we have um, moved that to day two. So, for instance, you have a, you know, you get there, you have your, you have your free time when you arrive. Um, you know, you get to explore, um, you know, all of Tamil or Kathmandu. But then there's a, a kind of time then that you can, you can obviously catch up with a guide and the team. Yeah. Uh, you have your briefing, for instance, with Anuj or one of the team. Um, and then you have your, uh, you know, your arrival meal, which is uh, day, um, which is on day two. Yep. Um, something that we've, we've again, try to remain as, you know, we want to, we wanted to do it on day one because it kind of makes sense. But sometimes then you've got to be flexible to, to make sure that people don't get left out. And it's actually worked out better in a yeah. way, um, some of the feedback we've had. Well, we've had a couple um, of, um, I actually know on the trip that we did in April. Yeah. Um, Stu, well, not Stu, what's his, oh, man, I can't believe I forgot his name. Anyway, one of the ever trackers um, turned up at like six o'clock at the airport, yeah. got picked up and had to go straight from the airport to the meal. That's right. And sort yeah, of yeah. Um, came in and it was a little, yeah, so what's Stu, Stu Ward. Yeah, what's Stu Ward? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So um, back, yeah. top guy, top guy. Um, but, you know, I, I think he arrived like a little <laughs> dazed and confused because it was almost like, right, I was in the UK like 24 hours ago. Some flying happened. I was in a car in the dark in Tamil, and now I'm in a room full of people I've just met, and there's dancing. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> gotta get um, in the dancing, mate. Gotta get in the dancing. Um, no, it's great. It's great to see so many people on today as well. I'm just looking. Even Kevin Beavis, Kev, how you doing? All he's, great. He's planned for first night syndrome by arriving a day early. Yeah, yeah, man after our own heart. There, I think. He's, uh, I met Kev. He's a really nice guy. Um, yeah, quite a lot of people as well who've catching the 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 Tuesday tune in first time in a while. So yeah, always great to see people live. If you are listening on the podcast though. Um, you know, or not live on YouTube because we do chuck it on there as well. People who, who miss it. Um, yeah. Um, great to have you listening and watching. Yeah. Um, that's why we're continuing to do these, you know, whilst we got people here and we hope it's, it's valuable. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of Nepal. I, I feel like we spent a lot of time in Nepal there, but very similar process though in, in Tanzania, isn't it? Yeah, pretty very much. Similar. Yeah. Very similar. So, um, the visa process pretty much follows the same principle. Yeah. You can do an e-visa online. Um, in fact, I think that's the only way you can get the visa. Uh, it is, yeah. yeah. It's, it's or, slightly different, yeah, actually. Beforehand. So, yeah, beforehand. Yeah. Um, or you can get a visa on arrival. Mm -hmm. I really, really recommend with Tanzania. I mean, I really recommend it with Nepal, but I really, yeah. really recommend it with Tanzania to get it in advance. Um, because when we first arrived there, and we were kind yeah. of just at the beginning of the season, and it was hectic. <clears throat> they had this new system in place there. It might have been a lot better, actually. But it wasn't very well signposted. So there was about five queues. 
And we just thought that they were different sort of, you know, kiosks, if you will, and you had to just yeah. queue. But no, the system was you had to queue from one side and then you went down, 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 down. Yeah. So we went into one queue for about an hour and a half to get there. And then we were told, no, no, you've got to go to the other one. So we were one of the last to leave the airport. And, yeah. you know, there's a few people that, you know, and we've traveled a bit. So we like to think we know what's going on. Well, yeah, you always, you know, there's one thing I've learned is that, you, you know, when, when you go through, when you go traveling, there's, there's always queues. <laughs> there's queues waiting for uh. us. There's queues waiting for to go get your, your passport stamped you know it, it is what it is you you're kinda... so much better at queue than I am. Like, <laughs> you get used to it you i get start used to it. i start to lose my mind if i'm in a queue for more than about 20 minutes <laughs> i say you gotta occupy day like but it's, you know it's and, part of the journey like, andy will like you'll have to talk to me to distract me from the rage <laughs> but like i'm not a good queuer i'll admit i'm not a good queuer i get too yeah. hot and flustered and i'm stressed and but anyway Get it before you go, yeah, because definitely. the next time we went there, obviously we learned from that occasion. Yeah. From that occasion, we turned up with our visas, and it was very easy. Do you remember? I looked yeah. really suspicious because I had my visa, and my back was really bad at the time. And the, the um, border control guy like went like that, and as I stepped, my back went. That's right. And, and I looked, he was like, "No, I, no, you can continue to come." And Dave's like, "I can't." And my back, so I had to walk. <laughs> I remember that grimacing really slowly towards him. Couldn't have looked more suspicious. And then when I arrived, he was like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, no, oh, it's just my back. I'm all right. And he was like, hmm. <laughs> you know, and then he was very suspicious wow, of me. But um, yeah. yeah so, so don't do that when you go through the visa process or, uh, or going through security. But no, it, it is a very similar thing. Back is another health thing. It is. Yeah. It is another health thing. I think we had put that on the wall as yeah. well. Um, it is going to be ailment bingo for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so with Tanzania, once you're through, again, some of you held up Evertrek. They'll be taking you to... Um, uh, to Springlands, which is uh, where we where we stay, which is a nice place. And again, very similar to Nepal. And this is the same on most of our, actually all of our trips, unless say you're on like the weekender in Marrakesh, where where you're picked up and actually taken straight to um, uh, straight to Atlas Mountains because that you're kind of starting because you're only there for four days, you know, unless you're having add-on days. But majority of the time, it's kind of a free day when you arrive, and it's the same there. You can hang about the hotel. Um, especially in Springlands, you've got a pool there. I'm not saying it's the warmest, but if you really want to go and jump in, go for it. If not, you can chill out, catch up with the rest of the group. Um, you can go for a walk if you want. Um, you know, obviously you've got tomorrow, which you know, if you're arriving, say this is day one. On day two, you've got a day tour, which is always quite nice. Um, and that's kind of it, really. Is it? I say with um, uh, trying to get my words out, and with Springlands, because we we do only use strictly one hotel in um in uh tanzania really you're right oh, yeah I'm, I'm all right <laughs> <laughs> i know usually it flows but yeah uh in tanzania then uh, that's the only one you're going to be using obviously with nepal you know if there are any sort of challenges like that we, we do we have a network of hotels that we can use obviously you know 99 times of 100 is going to be a lot but there are these odd times that we've had issues with um you know especially this season which is you know we have to be transparent the first time in a long time that we've had this many people um you know and that does cause bottlenecks and people coming down off mountains things like that which is why we've got the yeah. network of hotels well before we um, used two hotels anyway so we used to use two different hotels yeah, now we've transferred handy, to it? one mm. um but obviously you know we're gonna have to kind of share that out a little bit and obviously they're quite different um yes i'm not trying to like i do love nepali gar it's a place that's yeah quite dear to me because it, i had a great experience there when i was in nepal and i really like it i just think it's a much more relaxed place but a loft has got so much facilities and it's really awesome and it's five star yeah so we do try and everyone will spend time in a loft it's yeah. just whether or not a couple of Excuse days me. here or there have to be um accommodated in a different hotel yeah exactly. um so we covered off um you know just like the first 24 hours your food money you know anything like that um part of the arrivals as well is that people think when you get there you, you okay i'll go exchange my money straight away a lot of people now um are not really taking that much dollar uh, that much money obviously with nepal now with the new rules you gotta take 200 dollars. but with tanzania you can um you can just draw out from an atm if you wanted yeah. if you did take dollars though you know it just to let you know there is a place you can change it um at springlands and and locally as well um, you know, if you want to get a decent rate. So, you know, if you are taking money over, you're going to be OK. And Tanzania love dollars, don't they? Just yeah, like no, yeah. So, countries. yeah, I mean, dollars, you can spend as easy as local currency in most of the places that we go, particularly Tanzania and Nepal. Generally speaking, I'll take about 200 US with yeah. me um, and my bank card. 200 US, that just covers me getting my visa, anything in the airports I'll buy on my card. Yeah. And then once I get in there, I'll just 
I'll go to a, I'll go to an ATM and I'll just use the, I just I do that. Yeah, I know everybody will tell us, oh wow, that's expensive. Well, it's not that expensive. Yeah, you, know, you might get charged a few quid every time you like draw it out, but you know, I'm on my holidays. <laughs> you know, for um Yeah, do budget for it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So I mean those fees do add up. But it does help because I don't end up with a load of currency that I can't spend at the yeah. end because I kind of take it out as I go. Um and you can do that in Namshi as well. Like, you know, in Nepal when you get as high as Namshi, there's ATM machine. Yeah. Um, and in Kilimanjaro, there are no ATM machines, but luckily for you, there are also no shops. So um, <laughs> you only need you only need money so, when you well, get. They do take card in those shops. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but not on the mountain. So yeah, those are the the kind of the, the big two, obviously with with arrivals. And obviously with you know, because a couple of questions there around asking about you know kind of newer trips we do. What's the arrival process? Essentially, it's more or less the same. So most countries um, have the infrastructure. You know, the ones like if you go to Ecuador. Um, even um, like Peru, when you go into Machu Picchu, because <clears throat> you'd be arriving into Lima, then go into Cusco. Um, you know, it's a very, very similar process in terms of getting picked up, you know, from the airport, transferred to the hotel. Then you have some free time before then you you kind of you know, you're off on the on the trek in or yep. the tours and things like that. Um, again, with because they're they're kind of the numbers are smaller, you know, when you go into places like Argentina um peru ecuador um you know that you're not in as, as it's not as okay popular in terms of trekking places to go compared to say kilimanjaro or ever space camp so naturally you do have um you know not it's not quieter there's not as much i'd say not as much there but you kind of it's, it's a little bit different you, you'll certainly know it's a bit more rustic traveling experience um if i can word that correctly so that's kind of what it's like there but it's you know it's still very very good from a traveling perspective it's more of an adventure anyway i think south america just because of the way it, it, it kind of is anyway it's not yeah. as popular as some of the other parts of the world it is a bit more of an adventure yeah awesome um, so do bear that in mind where, where you go into these you know same with you know if you're arriving into islamabad and going up to skardu on k2 if you go to k2 base camp um you know again the the industry there's a lot smaller so you know the infrastructure yeah. it's not as there much we're still catered for it's not as like fine tuned as I say some of the others. So you know, again, remaining a little bit flexible when it comes to adventure travel, yeah, is um, is is a good way to go about it. Definitely, awesome. Um, we've had quite a lot of questions. Should we jump into the queues? Yeah, because uh, oh, we've got about half hour, haven't we? And, yeah. Um, I know we've got all the way. So, we've got a couple in from the beginning. I'm going to jump and answer the last question we got. Fed, okay. Though, because you yeah. just mentioned um, Pakistan and K2, and yeah, there's yeah. something I want to talk about. Okay. Um, so John Newman, hey John boy. Um, hey John. He said, "Is there a limit on how many tablets, medication you can carry in your luggage on the on oh, the wow. plane? Yeah. Paracetamol, ibuprofen, etc. He doesn't want to end up on an episode of Border Force um, or banged up abroad. I imagine something like that. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. Not that I'm aware of. No, for standard medication like you know ibuprofen, paracetamol, yeah. aspirin, stuff like that." I'm normally like a walking pharmacy. I mean, I, I rattle as yeah. I move around. So not really. I mean, if you've got an excessive amount, like if you've got like 10 boxes, you know, then they yeah, it, might, check, it yeah. might raise an eyebrow and they might yeah. wonder more about, um, less about sort of arresting you for that, but more about customs and bringing stuff in like that. Mm. Normally I'll bring, say, two ibuprofen, two paracetamol, box of aspirin, that type of thing. And that's enough to last me for the whole trip. Yeah. Knowing you can get stuff out there quite cheap as well um so no problem at all however one yeah. thing i did want to mention is with countries <clears throat> like i read this in a newspaper about okay. um uh pakistan where i think um a uk woman and uh, her husband was from pakistan she was returning to pakistan to be with him yeah and brought prescribed tramadol okay. in her bag right um and got arrested for it because it's um, illegal to have, or so with re like if you're bringing like opioids, like uh, codeine, yeah. or tramadol, or you know morphine, or anything like that. Um, first thing I would do is check the country, you know, see yeah. what the laws are. But also, like you know, if you absolutely need them and you have to have them, mm -hmm. just bring as much sort of doctor's evidence as you can. Yeah. Um, you know, just as much official documentation to say that you have it. Like declare it upfront when you're checking in that you have it. Um, I would check the, you know, because it's not something that kind of I've had much knowledge about, if I'm honest. You know, I know, Dave, you, you do take, you know, fair, fair amounts of accommodation pretty much for the entire amount of Killy. <laughs> it's like, if we wanted something, we went to Dave. People were coming up to me on the summit. <laughs> people quite, I didn't know. Have you got any ibuprofen? Your guide yeah, said you had a few. So funny. But, um, but, but yeah, do, do check the official guidance on it, 100%. Yeah, I just like to be prepared. Yeah, you, mate, it's great. 
It's you know, handy. I like to be bo- go trekking with Dave. It's brilliant. You know, you had a sore throat on Killy, didn't you? Sorted you right? Oh yeah, like razor blades, big time. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, but you you still got to eat your food. You still got to get your um. That's, your that's the one good thing about Andy. Like I I like to have a whinge. <laughs> you kind of say, "Oh, my throat hurts," but you only might mention it two or three times a day. I'll like, I'll get it in like every fifteen minutes. <laughs> you know, like I ah, you gotta crack on with it's it. It's my way of coping, though. You know, yeah. the mo- the most you know, if I'm loud and audible, I feel like I'm, I feel like I've dealt with it. Yeah. yeah um, but yeah, so jumping back to the beginning, jumping put that by there, Ramsey. Yeah, so, yeah. It's um. Well, that's okay. Yeah, it's good. Um, go. Yeah, literally because my mobile has gone for walkies. Yeah, Rob's um asked as well. So uh, Robert Jones, hello. Dropped us an email earlier. Um, I was wondering uh, what's included in the Kathmandu tour. So I don't do it before everyone else, or is it possible to join the previous group? Mm. Yeah, because I think he's arriving a couple of days early. So yeah, with the tour, we, we normally, um, and again, if you've if you've seen any of the uh, arrival videos we've we've got on, um, we've got a really good one on um, uh, not Facebook on YouTube that gives you kind of arrival day of Killy. But we unfortunately haven't got as much content around the day tour, which is good because it leaves you it leaves it a bit more like, oh my god, this is so cool. Mm. But normally um, there's four destinations that we aim for. Sometimes we only get to about two or three of them because um, it depends on how the group is, you know, what, um, you know, if you've got, if, if rabbit chap is a factor, mm-hmm. um, you know, we try and make it as, as great as we can. Like normally we go to um, like Monkey Temple, which is a really good um, uh, place to go. Uh, we also go to Durbar Square or you've got um, uh, Pashnu Patanath Temple, which is uh, basically where they do all the, the live cremations. It's always a bit, um, you know, some people find it a bit heavy. Culturally, it's amazing. I kind of almost feel a bit privileged sometimes mm-hmm. to be there. Um, you know, and it's a big, big part of the Hindu world because it's a, it's on the tributary of the Ganges. And you know, from a cultural perspective, it's really cool. Yeah. And then you've got Budanath, which is probably your favorite Budanath. base, isn't it? Yeah, and, I love uh, Budanath. Yeah. Temple. I mean, in terms of the, um, yeah, those types of attractions. Yeah. Budanath is one of my favorite because it's a little bit quieter yeah. than the normal hustle and bustle. Yeah. Um, it's a giant stupa. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yeah. It's the biggest sort of stupa in the world, I think, isn't it? It's it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I see Marky V's asking about live cremations. Yeah, so, yeah, it does happen. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's um, it's initially when you describe it to people like who have a sort of a, a like a, a view like we have, you know, here in the West that we don't deal with our death that way. Mm. It can seem quite morbid, but it's really not. Yeah. So what happens is that they follow their cultural practices of washing the body in the water. It's within twenty four hours. It has to be done. Isn't yeah, it? I think so. Yeah, in Hindu religion. And um, yeah, so that you will literally see them. You know, the family members will be supporting yeah. the body in the water and cleaning it, wrapping it in the orange robes and then it goes on the the pyre yeah um and then they set fire to it we're not allowed in the temple as non-hindus um and as uh, you know foreigners but we are allowed on the opposite side yeah. of the bank and it's not a huge river you know so just over there like yeah imagine like sort of a motorway sort of length like three lanes of a motorway on the other side there then you've got the the funerals the, the... never heard it described like that through <laughs> Now we're gonna go there. I'm going three lanes. Do you know what? Then. I'm not very good. Like, if someone said to me, like, "Oh, it's <laughs> ten yards over there." Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> like, is that a football pitch or yeah. pencil? I don't know. You know, so like, I, I have yeah. to equate it to something. So about three lanes of remote ways. No, I'm gonna use that now. I'm gonna use that next yeah. time there. But no, no, I, and you know, it is. You know, we we talk about maybe there's like dark tourism that kind of stuff. It's not really like that. It's it's more of a. I think once you experience it, because I was a bit uncertain the first time, and then I went there with kind of different groups and different customers it's um oh, it was I, definitely i think mark kind of was actually making a joke as well oh live well, cremations oh. they're not alive <laughs> i've just realized anyway wow that was a lovely uh explanation <laughs> of it but um sorry yeah. mark that went right over right over here yeah <laughs> but no um honestly yeah so that's the four kind of main parts we normally get to like i said sometimes we get to two or three of those because of time, you know, because of uh, maybe something, some alterations, weather, some things like that. But those are the kind of four that we normally mix, uh, mix um, around. Some boring moment. Nice, Marky V. You got us. You got a big time there, mate. Big time. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, next one. Um, so, uh, John Paul Moxham, uh, hey, how John soon Paul? in advance can I apply for my uh, visa for Nepal? Yeah. Um, I think about six months in advance you can apply for the visa. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, I probably get mine about two months out um maybe a month out something like that it doesn't take that long to get um so i generally get it when i know my travel plans are sort of confirmed but usually people book their flights ideally about a year in advance get your visa about 
between six months and one month um, before you go. You know, that's about good, right? Yeah, that's it. Unless you get it on arrival, in yeah. which case, get it, you know, like three hours before three you arrive. Three hours before, yeah. Uh, Rebecca Coleman, when's the best time to get a SIM card for Kilimanjaro Airport on the first day? Um, yeah, some some people do, um, especially because when you're on the mountain, the signal's a bit sketchy. Um, yeah, some people do get local SIM cards. You can get it in, in Moshi. Um, you know, so when you're walking around um, the, the, the town there, you can get uh, you can get a SIM card. I've never had a SIM. I've never got a, a SIM card personally. I know a lot of ever trackers who have. Um, have you ever used a SIM card? No, in, never. You never did it in Tanzania, did you? No, because because you were uh, Vodafone. And, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I it depends which network you're with. Yeah. Um, I was with the E the first time I went to Tanzania, and they didn't have great reception, to be honest with you. But Vodafone, I've had great reception there. Yeah. Um, their roaming is something like six pound a day, but you get to use your normal allowance. Um, so probably is a little bit more expensive than getting a local SIM. But then um, I think we tried getting a SIM once in Nepal. I remember um, because the phone <laughs> didn't, is didn't because work. the phone is locked, it didn't work. So yeah. I actually just rather use the roaming um, and keep it simple. But if you were going to plan on getting a, a local SIM card to use in your phone while you're there, yeah. get it on day one. Um, yeah, you know, definitely. just when you arrive, go in the hotel and um, then just head out into Moshi. Yeah. Um, you can talk to the guys in the hotel if you want a <coughs> list or if you're happy to walk, you can walk. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you can just go up to it. There's loads of telecommunication shops and things like that. They'll be happy to help. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, it's good to get a SIM card and, and keep, you know, to, however you want to be connected, disconnected, um, you know, which is optional. Um, it's all yeah. good. Um, Charlotte, uh, Ranger, when, how do you decide when trips you go on? I mean, you two. Ah, okay. In terms of me and Dave, um, it depends really. We we kind of because we uh, all of our um, all of our trips are led by local guides. Um, you know, we don't go on these trips. You know, some, sometimes we do. It depends if we're there for you know maybe family reasons or we're over in the country anyway, um, or you know it's organised that we did. Like um, I think I've done. I think I did three base camp trips once within six months. Um, I did two in the autumn, then one in the early spring, and that was nuts. But every trip is amazing and different. And, you know, you do, even though I've been to say Everest Base Camp five times, you, you don't get bored. It's amazing. And yeah, certainly yeah. like uh, we just done Tupcal. Obviously, COVID has kind of put off doing well, trips for two years. I did 1.6 of Tupcal. Yeah, you, you, you trekked the Atlas Mountains. Yeah, I trekked the Atlas Mountains. I got quite high. See, as well. that's, that's, that's a good reframe. Yeah, it's that's a good reframe. <laughs> yeah. um, um, but no, it's, it's, you know, sometimes it's how it fits in with, with, with the, the business as well, because, uh, you know, we're very. We're growing a lot at the moment and we've got a lot of different things that we're kind of um you know trying to improve trying to grow does mean we're not on trips all of the time like we we want to be but yeah, it true. means that we're, we're kind of developing the business yeah well yeah. my busiest time of year is february march april may september october november <laughs> which i think is 75 percent of the year then 75 percent of the year yeah. and it's also prime trekking time in nepal right so um <laughs> yeah but not my, yeah it yeah. is generally that it's just kind of like honestly it's um yeah. The first time I decided, so if you're thinking about your first trip, then if you haven't already got like a burning desire to sort yeah. of see Everest or climb Kilimanjaro, then watch some videos, do some research and see which one just sort of floats your boat and go with yeah. that one. But always have in mind that if that's just number one, yeah. you know, so once I've done number one, the next they come easy, then they come thick and fast and you'll meet people and they'll tell you what great experience they had in Morocco, or what an amazing time they had in South America. Mm. And then you kind of just follow your nose and you just yeah. do that and see which ones at which work in which life. I mean, I was talking to Randy today that um, I'm going back to Tupcal. Yeah, you said, didn't it? Because you, you, well, you're, you're, you're over your, um, you know, your, your sinus yeah. infection. You were like, right, I'm going to Tupcal. Just the last few days, I've just felt, all right, felt like my, felt like my fitness has come back a little bit, like in terms of like, yeah, yeah how I should have been before I went like then you can breathe I can breathe you know so I was Jealous. like I'm thinking yeah I need to go but it's um and, and whilst we're talking about Tupcal actually we're very close um Steve and Zach who came with us to Tupcal are putting together some video footage about it very close to getting all of that done you may see a little teaser out there at the moment um we've put across um all the, the social platforms but yeah um really excited to, to get that put together Hopefully the next couple of weeks. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I feel like I'm doing right, Steve. I'm going to forward this bit and say, "Well, you got two weeks now." Because yeah, we just given him a deadline. We just given him a deadline. No, nice. no, he's um, yeah, we don't want to rush. Uh, obviously, nothing. There's no point rushing it and getting it half as good. But yeah, I'm really excited um, about that as well. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, what, what's the next question? Um, so the next one, hmm. Tom Massetto. Anyone, Tom, how you doing? Anyone who's he's rev been busy, Tom. He's, he loves the trekking. He he's always out. He's, he's mad for it. <laughs> um, anyone who's Revolut in Tanzania? So I think that was a question to everyone viewing plus us. No, do you know what? I'm actually a lot of customers. The first time I heard of Revolut was mm. I just did a week in Maribel in March. Yeah. Um, and one of my friends used uh, had a Revolut card, and we used it for the tolls and things like that. And as I oh, understand it, it's you pay money into that account, yeah. and then when you use that card, it automatically completes the transaction in the local currency. Is that correct? Yeah, it's one of those. It's similar, um, basically, from a secure point of view. Is that you know you put a certain amount of money on it, and then you go ahead and you, and you can use it in country. So it, it's more secure way of of doing international spends rather than using your debit card yeah um and some countries don't accept debit cards that well like um like remember we were in uh, andorra for instance and we're going through all those tolls the debit card and you're like it's plenty of money oh there. yeah it should work on the debit card but didn't it wanted a credit all, card every toll in spain Vezalim wouldn't work in. would it so we we were really struggling to kind of like pay the tolls also it i think happen i'm not sure if mastercard um, you can have some difficulty using that in Nepal, I think. Something, yeah, um, it depends I'm on the place. Because I, I I've never used it, but I'm convinced yeah. that I've heard that. So I'll double check and maybe put that out there. Unless any of you guys who have been have taken a MasterCard and had some issues. Well, Shona mentioned, um, I think, uh, around... How did I know? Shona I know. would know. I think because uh, sometimes the ATMs, and you know, because I, I I rarely take cash. Oh, she has, it. yeah, it's right there. Um, <laughs> it's like I've scrolled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I, I I use the ATMs a lot, and you know it does you know is you know, three or four pounds to get your money out, um, but it is quite secure. But yeah, Mastercard, I've never had an issue personally, um, you know, because you, you kind of just manage to, to get get the dollars out mm. um, or get the the rupees out, I should say. Um, but yeah, definitely we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, if you did have issues with Mastercard, we'll definitely ask around and see if, if anyone else had that issue. Um, you know, if if it is that it's Visa. Most of your cards, if it, obviously if it's a MasterCard credit card, you know, don't just solely rely on that. Would be my advice. Yeah. To any new people going out there, maybe take, um, you know, if you've got a Visa credit card, um, or even something like Resolute. Um, you know, obviously debit cards do work as well, but yeah. like you know, less safe. Um, you know, when traveling. But yeah, it's a good. It's a good point. Good question. Um, certainly when it comes to to to, men, I mean, um, to everything, you can always ask the guys in the hotel or the yeah. team like that as well if you need any help and stuff like that because yeah. they'll they'll more than happily direct you to the best places where you can go or um, direct you to an actual bank where you can go in. There's actually a bank in Namshi that I used. I remember that. That's what the ATMs money. in Namshi. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, do you remember yeah. I lost about I think I lost about forty quid in an ATM in Namshi. I remember that. It was yeah. the day before we were due to so we were due to fly back to Kathmandu the next morning, and I just yeah. wanted to draw out some money. Um, just so I could have some fermented vegetable juice. <laughs> and, um, and I went down and used a cash point yeah. and it sort of completed the transaction, but didn't give me any money. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do? And I couldn't find anyone. Yeah. And then the shop closed and I didn't know who they were. And I was just like, oh, well, cost of doing business, I guess. Just going through some of the comments. Uh, was it Stephen Halls? Five months till EBC by Gokyo, Stephen. Can't wait to, uh, to have you on the trip, mate. Um, I love Tom. Book a trip. You won't regret it. You will want to do more. Yep. Mate, it's, it's almost like he took the words right out of our mouth. Uh, um, Daniel asked, hey, Daniel, how you doing? Um, is this your first Tuesday tune? Hey, Danny Sachs. Um, Daniel Saxon, uh, what's the average group size for Ultimate Island Peak during winter? Wow, it's a good, good question. Um, winter, basically, when it comes to Ultimate Island Peak, normally a lot smaller groups anyway, because they're, they're kind of less popular, I should say, um, in terms of, you know, everyone sort of goes to Everest Base Camp or Annapurna. Uh, the trekking peaks, you know, it's, sometimes you get people who do it first time. The majority of the time is for people who have been, say, to Nepal. And they've been to Everest Base Camp. They want to go a bit higher. So they take on like Island Peak or Mera Peak. Um, and, and certainly, uh, yeah, Ultimate Island Peak is, you know, an itinerary we put together probably about five years ago now, five, six years ago. And it um, takes in some of the high passes, uh, which is the reason that we don't run it in winter. Um, because basically during the winter... It can be a lot of snow, uh, high winds. So sometimes the passes are closed and also it's quite dangerous on the peaks. So we only run uh, that trip um, during the two trekking seasons. So uh, March, April, May um, or uh, September, October, November. Sometimes we do creep into December now just because September, sometimes the monsoon creeps over from August into September and it's kind of knocked the season on a little bit. Mm. So some of our trips actually are at the end of November 
and then they run into December. So bit just chilly. be prepared. It does get cold. Yeah, it does bit get chilly, cold, but, but it's know, fun. It's Himalayas, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. Um, I was just about to answer a question here. Okay. And I actually think Rosie's stolen my answer. Has she? Um, yeah. So um, <coughs> someone me. someone asked, uh, does anyone know the name of the hotel that we use in Tanzania? Um, <gasps> She's in there. And it's Springland's <laughs> Hotel in Moshi. Um, thanks, Rosie. Appreciate that. I think Rosie's happy. It's <laughs> looking at like I see Rosie watching. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you, Rosie. <laughs> did you, you you just answered Danny Sachs's question, didn't I you? Did, right? I yeah. did, yeah. Uh, how much, I hope that helps, Daniel, by the way. Mark EV, how much does Roman cost in Nepal? You shouldn't know that. <laughs> um, yeah. So it depends which network you're with, I guess. So when yeah. I'm with, with Vodafone, I think it's £6 a day. But then I get to use my normal allowance. When I was with EE, I had yeah. to ring them before I got there and tell them where I was going. And then they gave me like a data limit and stuff like that. And I think I paid around 10, 12 pound or something like that for yeah. it. Um, but uh, one one other thing to say is that there's often lots of Wi-Fi and stuff like that, especially in Kathmandu. Yeah. Um, and also when you're on the treks, we've talked previously about those Wi-Fi data cards and things like that. Um, Everest Link. Everest Link, yeah, which makes, um, which makes a big difference, you know, and um, yeah, use those. Yeah, definitely. I love Georgie Clark. Afternoon, guys. Shh. I'm hiding in the stationary cupboard. I almost read that like you're whispering, as if he's literally watching a Tuesday tune in. Yeah. Uh, that's brilliant, mate. Brilliant. But yeah, uh, good on you, Georgie. Um, yeah, hiding away, watching the Tuesday tune in, mate. That's we amazing. haven't got a stationary cupboard, have we? Um, it's more of a shelf. Stationary shelf. I think it'd be quite hard to hide in there. But yeah. you, know, you, you, you got a cupboard around there. You can hide in if you really wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> no worries, Daniel. Yeah, hope that helped, mate. Um, let us know any any advice on dates or anything. Do reach out to the team. We can we can sort that out for you. Get you on the group. But um, sorry, whilst I remembered actually, Daniel, I didn't think I actually answered your question, which was around group size, right? I know I said smaller, but average group size on um, our trekking peaks are actually more around four to six people. Quite quite small groups. Um, sorry, I, I forgot I didn't mention specifically. Um, but awesome. Uh, Janet Marwood, can you char charge your phone up on the trips? Yes, you can. Um, when it comes to electricity on any trip, you know, especially in remote locations, it's not always guaranteed. Um, you know, the infrastructure is there, especially in Nepal on the, you know, the well -to trodden routes like uh, Everest Base Camp, um, mm -hmm. you know, Annapurna, that kind of, those kind of routes. Um, but sometimes because they're powered by solar, it, it's not always there if it's been bad weather. Yeah. Most of the time, though, you can. You know, any, any trip that I've been on, I know a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of our ever trekkers, they've generally had chance to, to charge. Um, you know, one recommendation, I know this will come from Dave, is power banks. Dave, I know you're a big... Um, banks? Yeah, you've heard of power banks, right? Oh, you've heard of Anchor, surely. Anchor? Comrade Anchor. <laughs> um, yeah. This I, is an in-joke, by the way. Yeah, I tend to bring my power own power. Bank here. Yeah. Well, because it's strange. Like, you know, some people like to go away and they like to, like, not be in touch with anyone at all. Yeah. Turn yeah. the phone off, turn it back on two weeks later. Some people like to be in touch. I like the option. You know, yeah. and um, and I like to keep my camera and my phone and, you know, everything else nice and powered up. So, yeah, yeah. I, have, I have a couple of power banks. Yeah. It's, um, and that is a, a kind of easier way to do it, for instance. If you do have a decent power bank, um, you can get some of them for, like, £30 on Amazon now. And they do charge you you know, like an iPhone or a smartphone, like five, six times. Some people charge them in Kathmandu and then, you know, take them on a trip. Same with um, Tanzania, if you're climbing Kili, it's not always a, a electricity available because uh, we don't stay in the huts, we camp. So, um, you know, you can take the power banks, charge them down to the hotels, and then off you off you can go. So, yeah, it's um, it's definitely a way to do yeah. that, uh, if that, if that makes sense. I like sense. to do it because, yeah. I mean, power banks are great anyway. So I always got one if I go hiking in Wales. I yeah. always take one with me just in case. You never know, yeah. man. It just makes things a big different. It makes things very easy. Um, I just see a couple of questions there. Um, Jerome slash hall monitor. He's not done a good job. There's been a rank. <laughs> I know Jerome. Maybe you'd have a chat over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's, he's not getting promoted today. <laughs> uh, is there anyone at Aloft who can advise us about shopping in Tamil? Yeah, 100%. Also, you'll have a guide, um, a tour guide. Yeah. You know, so when you do the mm -hmm. tour, um, you can ask those guys. Anuj will be there to give you a briefing. Yeah. But also, you can just go and grab any member of the hotel staff and ask them, you know, uh, what's their recommendations but my recommendation is to actually just head out just follow out your there. nose yeah, and yeah. do some exploring yeah um you can do a little bit of go um google a research yeah um see what happens and but yeah just the some of the best and most fun times i've had of when we've just gone out for a wander yeah. um an example of that when me and andy went to budanath and i wanted to buy like a wooden mask 
Um, yeah, exactly. You can just go and, out and explore is, is definitely the best way. Yeah. And, and we were in a store and some guy just came up to me and Andy and he was like, you want to see masks? Follow me, mate. So we followed this guy it's, like... That was... We followed weird. this guy like down this narrow area then yeah. into this door and then up this narrow staircase and I walked into like the best room I have ever been in. <laughs> I mean... It's Indiana Jones. It was like covers, Indiana Jones artifacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have spent like $5,000 in there. If Easy. I, could. I yeah, mean, it was, it, it was crazy, by far top three rooms I've ever been in. It might be the best. <laughs> It was good. Um, right, I know we, we're, we're getting on for time now, so I've got a couple more questions, I think. It was one from Kev, I think, Kevin Beavis. Um, apologies have been asked before. Is there a way to stay in touch with the group before, during arrival, like WhatsApp group? Yeah, so there are, um, because we don't actually set up the groups, um, WhatsApp groups, things like that, obviously we've got the, the Facebook group, which is, you know, which is huge. Uh, I think we've got like 5,500 Evertrackers and, and kind of members now, uh, which is awesome. But do drop um, your dates in there, Kev, because um, you know we because we haven't set up the WhatsApp groups because we've got so many groups. Um, you can imagine managing like uh, you know two or three hundred WhatsApp groups is a bit nuts. So yeah, we 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 kind of get um, you know people who are on groups to do that themselves. Don't forget though to download the app as well. That's always a good way, especially during um, you know you can the messenger isn't direct, but you can upload pictures. You can get all the information on the on the what on the Vamoos app uh, that comes with um, your booking as well. So definitely use that um and then yeah if you want to set up obviously your own whatsapp groups you know because when people sort of meet maybe even on the training weekend and you want to come with us and you want to um, catch up with some of the other group you can do that um you know we kind of left that with um with evertrack because it's kind of you know from from the feedback we've had that's worked um you know we're always looking for to see ways we can prove it but yeah because of the the, leg the way of setting the whatsapp groups up it's uh, we kind of uh, decided to go with you know um yeah if you can if you message in a group about your dates and, and things like that then we can um you can set up the own groups uh, essentially yeah. but yeah yeah good good question mate good question exactly um one rob smith has said we'll ever hey, uh, look to do climbing trips such as mont blanc in the future um absolutely absolutely yeah mm -hmm. definitely um it's something we kind of looked into already um it's just about finding the right team yes um and you know putting the trip together in the right way um i think I think we say this every time there's a new trip question, but we don't like just to, you know, release them overnight. Yeah. Um, we like to take our time about it and make sure that when we do send people out to a high, particularly if we're going to be climbing a high summit, that we've got the right team, the right guides, the right support and everything yeah. like that. But um, yeah, it's definitely, we talked about it recently, didn't we? Was yeah. It yesterday we had a conversation I about think it. it might have been over the weekend, I think, because, you know, Mont Blanc's been on the agenda for a while. We know it's, you know, unfortunately we've had Evertrackers, well, not unfortunately, but we, we we prefer to come with us, but we know if we're not doing it, you know, it's it's fair game. Um, is it? You know, we've found... <laughs> not happy about that. <laughs> hey, it's all good. Um, That's not Jerome, is it? No, 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 this is Rob. Um, uh, but no, Rob, and, and basically there's... Uh, there's We've been in touch with uh, local suppliers who essentially do trips up here, but they're not quite... I'm going to put it. Um, they're, they're not quite the level we kind of offer um if, if that makes sense you know because we run all of our trips very similar they, they've got a very high standard in terms of the level of guide um you know the we talk about arrivals and the hotels and things like that we want to make it it's not just you're not just having a mountain guide it's all the things that come with a trip and we want to make sure that that is ever trackified you know it's 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 as good as the other trips so yeah we uh, we haven't reached we haven't found that supplier yet as soon as we do we're, we're certainly going to be pushing out Mont Blanc because that is massively on our agenda. We've got a lot of ever trackers that want to do it. Um, you know, but I appreciate look, you know, life doesn't stop. If you want to go and do it, mate, you go and do it. And you know, yeah, it's, that's it's fine. one of those. <laughs> you don't want to wait, mate. You don't want to drive a peak or mara peak in the meantime, that's fine, mate. Um, but certainly, and, and you make a good point. Like people think um, you know, and, and mod blog is a hell of a peak, you know, uh, obviously one of the highest in Europe. Um, you know, if we, if we take Elbrus out of the equation, it is the highest in Europe, but Elbrus. Uh, the moments in Europe, um, you know, is the highest mountain in Europe. And it's one of those that is, is become popular. Um, you know, it is a busier kind of route than a lot of our trekking peaks that we do. Um, you know, you're looking at Island Peak, Mara Peak. They're higher than uh, Mont Blanc. And certainly in, in some ways, you know, like some of them are more challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, but that being said, you know, Mont Blanc's a great challenge. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be doing it, um, doing it very soon, but we'll let you know, Rob. Yeah. Definitely. Um I'll tell you what, we're almost up, guys. We've got a couple more questions because I don't want to leave them hanging. But we've got um, Jana, uh, which facts you need for Tanzania? So, yeah, good question. We do have um, uh, basically some 
uh, some content around vaccinations and things. Uh, if you go onto our website in the Knowledge Centre and just put in vaccinations or injections, it will come up with the content there for you. Um, but I recommend you go onto Nomad Health Clinics. And if you basically just got a little drop down there, you put in like Tanzania, it'll tell you exactly what you need. Um, but normally it's, it's the every 10 year boosters that you have, you know, like tetanus, typhoid, diphtheria, um, the optional ones, um, you know, like rabies, you don't have to have, but like Dave, you've had it. I haven't had it. It's an optional thing, depending on how you, you know, how you feel. If I see an animal, I'm going to pet. Um, exactly. Dave's, Dave loves dogs and animals. So, you know, it's probably good that you've got it. Yeah. Um, another one that you need of Tanzania is yellow fever. Um, uh, so definitely uh, get that as well. And then there's there's other ones that you can kind of get that might be um, uh, that you might want to take a look at. But definitely do that. Well, and um, malaria is probably uh, the other big one. Yeah, which is not technically a vaccine, exactly. but something you need to um, yeah. absolutely do. And also maintain taking for the entire time. So don't stop when you go over the mountain. Yeah, um, keep taking them that whole time. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, just uh, Jerome, go into my blog or around. Well, both. We want to do both, yeah, a mob blog ascents and the trekking part. Um, so, yeah, definitely going to be um, looking at that as well. So, yeah, well, yeah. as soon as we know, we'll, we'll obviously put that out, um, you know, because we know that the community are looking to to do it. But, Dave, I feel, wow, it's, it's gone over an hour already. I know. I've been holding in, like, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is nothing to do with the tuning, but there's a yawn right there. Is it? And there's it's, a yawn. It's really hard to try and, like, not do it. <laughs> um, there we are, mate. Oh, so I'm keeping Dave up at the moment. That is the biggest yawn I've ever seen. Honestly, have. God, I've been holding wow. him. I've been trying you not to. Need that much oxygen. I've been trying not to. Um, I, I didn't have a good sleep. <laughs> but no, um, yeah, no, it's been, that was a great one. Yeah, yeah it was that. really good. And um, hopefully, you yeah. know, there's some uh, golden nuggets that you've gleaned in there. Um, but you know, you can get a, you can get a one to one nugget anytime you want just by calling us. Yeah, exactly. And anything you need, guys, do drop them in. We'll be back next week, um, you know, with another Tuesday tune in. But I hope today was useful. I know around arrivals, it can kind of some people are like, oh, arriving, you know, that should be easy. But I hope, you know, we always like to address certain questions, especially if some people are having maybe, okay, what does that arrival process look like? Mm. You know, you know, how, how can I, you know, what's it like when I arrive and, and some of the airport, the airport, what's the first day look like? You know, some of these questions, you know, we want to answer them. Uh, although I know they're not the, the kind of um, most exciting questions. You know, people are asking what are my boots? People asking, how do I train for altitude? You know, we, we obviously, uh, there's lots of those out there um, that, that we've done, but certainly we want to change it up a little bit. We've got one coming up soon, actually, um, which is going to be all around the guides and the power of a local guide, which is actually something that's coming up, um, hopefully next week or the week after. But we, um, it's something we're really, really passionate about. And, um, yeah, that'll be on the next Tuesday. Tune in. Awesome. Any final words, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right you start yawning again yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right guys take it easy take and it easy. Uh, if you're arriving in the trip good luck on any trip especially marky v i know you've got annapurna um anything you need guys give us a buzz bye we'll do it again